Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of my tutorial about the plane crash video. This time we are going to talk about a way I figured out to create breakable trees and or vegetation. The system I used on the plane crash video was a bit different and required way more baking time than this one. I didn't know how to do that at this time but it's uh, very, fin very simple in fact. For the plane crash I basically fractured everything but uh, I couldn't really use high poly stuff since everything was uh, after simulated with rigid bodies uh, and baking time would have taken uh, a year on my computer. So to achieve it we will need some special add-ons and resources. First you need to run the scene on the fracture modifier build. This is entirely free. So you, you, you can find it on the link below. You also need the tissue add-on and make sure you have enabled the sapling tree add-on. I'll make sure to let the links of the fracture build modifier and tissue add-on in the description. All right, uh, to start this scene, we need a tree. Uh, I'm using shift A, curve, sapling tree. As you can see, this add-on will automatically generate a preset tree uh, by using curves. I'm using a different preset, but it's, uh, it's working with any type of them. I'll go with this one, but you want to play a bit with this, with uh, the properties to get the shape you want. Make sure you enable the leaves button and set addition value. We won't render them, but we need some to create the text group. Um, no need to create uh, a, a thousand of them. Uh, once you have the shape you need, we need to convert it uh, as polygon. For this, I'm using Alt-C and click Poly from Curve. Now we want to prepare our vertex group. They are going to be useful later. The first one will control the anchor point uh, for our tree as passive rigid body. Click on the button plus to add a new vertex weight layer and use Control tab, enter into vertex weight edit mode and use Alt-Left click to draw a linear ramp from the roots to the top of your tree. We need a second vertex weight. This time, no need to click uh, the, the add button. Just press T to enable the, to, to display uh, the left toolbar and scroll down until you find the tissue add-on menu. Select weight from faces area. This function will automatically create a weight from the size of, your, of each polygon. Since the little ones are now set to zero or close to zero, we need to give them a little a little higher value. Go in the vertex weight edit mode and set the strength to 0.1. Use alt left click. Use alt left click to drag above the top of the tree a small value on every vertices. The last vertex group we want to create is a value to tell where our twigs will grow. Go back into object mode with control tab, add a new vertex group, rename it leaf. Enter in edit mode with tab. Select all vertices by pressing A on keyboard. Make sure the value of the group is set to 1 and click Assign. Now we go in the modifier panel. Create a vertex weight proximity modifier. Add our leaf vertex group in it. Add the leaves object in the object slot and switch from object to geometry. Play a bit with the I value to get something like this. We need to invert it right now. So uh, re-entering into vertex weight edit mode and click invert. Now it's time to fracture our tree. Let's go to physics panel and add the fracture modifier. Set the shards count to two. In the drop down menu, add our passive vertex group in the passive empty slot and the faces area group to the threshold slot. Now enable threaded and click execute fracture this can take a moment, depending on your computer. Uh, once it's structured, don't forget to save your scene. Enable use constraint breakable. Enable use constraint and breakable. Set the constraint limit value to 10 and the search radius on 2 if your scene scale is close to mine. Just below, you'll find the constraint breaking system settings. Uh, start with 10 in threshold, but uh, you'll probably have to play with the settings since each, uh, each tree is different. In the constraint special, I set the angle 
to 45, which means basically uh, if I get this properly right, that every part that will rotate over 45 degrees will break. As we are fracturing wood, it seems to me that it's a good value. Below you can set the distance to 0.2 if your scale scene is close to mine. Enable weight angle and weight distance to allow the fracture modifier to use the vertex group. In the constraint deformed settings, you can also set the deforming angle to 5. It's going to tell each shard to keep its deformation from every rotation above 5 degrees. And now we are done with the settings and it's time to bake and see the result. All right, next thing, uh, we are going to use our dynamics to deform our twigs and leaves. Go into the particles panel and create a new layer of particles, set it to air, enable advanced random and use modifier stack. Reduce the normal value to 0.1, set the tangent to 0.12. The size of the hair needs to the size of the hairs needs to match averagely the size of our twigs models. Scroll down until you see vertex group. Add, vert add your vertex group called leaf uh, in the density slot. Now every hair is growing only where the vertex group have a value above zero. Enable air dynamics, give a try using Alt A. If your hair is losing too much, you can increase the stiffness and goal values. You can also reduce a bit the mass value. When the settings fit your scene, set the quality steps value to 10 and back the simulation. Select your twig, create a face area vertex group, add a hair particle system too, Add your vertex group to it and add your leaf model to the object instancer. Since the, these twigs will be instanced on the tree and the tree has a thousand hairs, you need to multiply by thousand your amount of leaf on these twigs. In the modifier panel, add a particle instance modifier and select your tree object. This can be easy to draw in real time. Make sure your twig is facing Y axis and enable create a long path and select Y. Now you can hide the modifier from the viewport and do your render. That's it for this part. I hope this will help you in your VFX project. I hope you enjoyed it also. As usual, if you have any questions, leave it in your comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Since the part two of the car crash tutorial is talking about fractured rigid bodies, I'm thinking about doing one big tutorial for the plane fracture and this one combined. So until then, take care guys and see you next time.